Uh, join me for prayer, if you will, please. Our Father, we're so thankful for the day, for this time that we can spend together. Father, you've blessed us with so much. We give thee thanks for this place, for each other. Father, this time that we can spend to worship you. We pray that our thoughts and our prayers, the songs that we sing, are acceptable unto thee and glorify thy name. Father, we're thankful for Jesus, for all that he has done for us. We pray, Father, that you would continue to bless us, that you would bless us as a, a congregation. Father, as Brandon is, is fixing to move here, we pray that you would help him in that endeavor, help us in our support of him, that we may continue to grow, that we can be a light in this community. Father, we're thankful for the book, teaches us. We pray that you would hear us in his name. Amen. That is weird. Can you all hear me now? One, two, three, four, five. Did I not turn that on? Okay. That's our job. We have to check one another. We are trying to finish the book of Ecclesiastes. Sharon asked me if I breezed through and was finishing up today, and I said, I breezed through a half a chapter. <laughs> but uh, Brother Haley was the first one that I ever studied under that went through this book. And when he explained that it was not a revelation from God the way all of the other books are. And you begin reading it just to see what Solomon figured out on his own and how he oftentimes got it wrong. Then it's become one of my favorite books. And uh, to read that, but you have to read it with that perspective or it's, as one friend said, that's a depressing book. And it's really not. Uh, once you do it. So we have covered that. Basically what he has learned is this, and he keeps repeating it. Learn to enjoy what you're doing. Learn to enjoy your life here. Enjoy your spouse. Enjoy your work. And uh, that that's what God had made life for us to do. And so Whatever stage you're in, whatever, learn to enjoy that. And that's hard. Some jobs are not enjoyable. And sometimes we get into a position where you can't just quit and walk down the street and get another job. Uh, and so sometimes you have to stick it out and tough it out. But there's other things in your life that you then begin to enjoy. So in chapter 10, we uh, started and we began talking about wisdom. And uh, we've already covered half of this chapter. The first thing he points out is, is that foolishness is just foolish. And uh, uh, being ignorant and staying ignorant is foolish. And so he, he covers this again. And he's done this like three or four times, comparing wisdom and foolishness. Now, foolishness is not ignorance. What's the difference between ignorance and foolishness? Okay. 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 And there, there's a third element that you can line up with that. And that is, there is a, an IQ problem. There are some people that can't learn. And when we talk about uh, ignorance and foolishness, we're not talking about that element. What we're talking about is people that could learn but don't. Or people that have learned but don't use it. And the fool in the book of Proverbs, there was uh, four different words that were used. 
And they always were talking about the person that refused to listen, refused to learn. And so Solomon's just talking about that type of a fool, a fool that could do better but doesn't care, doesn't want to learn. Even when he's learned, he ignores it. And uh, uh, that's just going to lead to more and more and more problems. Uh, Verse 3, when the fool walks along the road, his sense is lacking and it demonstrates to everyone that he is a fool. Uh, uh, It just shows. It doesn't take very long to be around certain people and you just realize uh, they don't have any common sense about how things are supposed to work. And so how does that work? For example, in uh, we've... Now, for 200 years, we've never lived under a king. And even the kings uh, were under the, um, what is it, the maximum, the Carter, Charter, whatever, uh, Magna Carter. Thank you. I knew it was one of those MC words. Uh, that, and all that did was that that made the king answerable to the people. And that changed the whole concept of, of, of kings as it was known, uh, particularly in Solomon's day. The king was the king. He made the rules. He made the laws. And if you didn't like it, uh, not much you can do about it. Move <laughs> to a different kingdom on that. So uh, if the ruler's temper rises against you, you've taken a position a political position, a concept, or an idea, and it's made the king angry with you. The best move is just be slow. Don't do anything quickly. Does that really apply to our political system? This is a hard part in some of these Old Testament books. How do you transition from what was really going on there with what we're doing now. But I would say, yes, uh, if your position in your party, although, does anybody ever change parties today? Why? Under the threat, of <laughs> uh, threat of not being reelected is the biggest, yeah. Uh, for a politician, I guess that is death. But uh, anyway, uh, It still has some practicality, but here's what I want you to always remember. Uh, W.L. Horton. Does anybody here remember W.L.? Okay. He was an old Texas preacher, and I met him when he was uh, old, about my age now. And uh, he told me one time we were studying, he says, always remember you're reading somebody else's mail. And I just like the, the picture of that that this is not a book written to us. It applies to us, but how we get there is understanding how it applied to them and then going through this 